is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, 204 the time. What are we going to do now? We're going to ban all FedEx packages? I think that's what we ought to do. Um, it, uh, the Austin serial bomber uh, has assumed room temperature, but they're saying he may have other devices out there. Uh, evidently, they have what they call a treasure trove of information. I don't know what that means. Uh, Mark Anthony Condit. You look at this kid, he looks like the kid that lives next door that mows your grass. Uh, I mean, he was named uh, as the serial bomber behind this string of blasts that terrorized all of Texas for, uh, specifically Austin, for about three weeks. Left two people dead, and uh, they're warning that other explosive devices may still be out there. I don't know how they've come to that information. Maybe it's the treasure trove of information they found. Who knows? Um, They triangulated cell phone uh, pings, evidently, to track this guy down to a motel, and then he blew himself up. Man, that's a tough way to go, isn't it? I don't think I would do that to myself. No, I don't think so either. See, I I can't picture killing myself anyway that too uh, I, I mean have, even if i just you know took a pill and fell asleep i still i can't picture that yeah i couldn't do that at all uh but uh the um, first picture of this uh, kid came out this morning it was authenticated by uh, i guess one of the publications down there the picture came from the facebook page of his mom who appeared to be celebrating his high school graduation um you got to look at this kid. You look at this kid and it's, it's like, I mean, literally, uh, how much for the front yard? How much for the backyard? I mean, he was 23 years old. He looks about 16. Uh, federal prosecutors identified him as the Austin bomber. And uh, they caught this guy through surveillance photos obtained by, uh, I guess, Fox dropping off two suspicious packages on Sunday. Now, who does that? And, of course, now the big reason is why. Why Why did he do this? Geographically, why that particular area? Who knows? Maybe he got kicked out of school. I don't know. But, I mean, you're carrying boxes. I, I'm wa- looking at this one picture. He's walking in the FedEx office, got a ball cap, T-shirt, jeans, and he's carrying it looks like a flat box and a bigger box on top. I mean, what's going through your head at that point? See, I could never be a, a law enforcement profiler because my brain doesn't work that, that way. I mean, it just doesn't. Knowing that someone may, maybe at FedEx, maybe uh, at its destination, is going to get killed in the most horrific way, maybe even you, and it just, you know, and maybe I'll go get a water burger after that. I, I mean, think about that for a second. The big question everyone is asking is why? Why? One of the two packages exploded on a conveyor belt at FedEx. If you're a FedEx employee, this has got to bother you too, right? Uh, Because they can't open your packages without permission. I heard uh, a lady talking. She said, yeah, last year we uh, we heard a package rattling and made just a bizarre noise like an electric fence. Well, some idiot was sending a rattlesnake through FedEx. Um, you know, one of the two back packages exploded. The second package was intercepted by authorities at a, I guess, another facility near the airport. Um, they used clues uh, that they got from packages, surveillance video. Yeah, you got to hand it to law enforcement. I mean, all the things they went through. I mean, they just threw every officer and agent they had at this. And, I mean, think about all the people there are in Texas or Austin or any particular city, and somehow, some way, you're able to, to pick out of that, that huge populace one guy. 
I mean, that's that's pretty amazing to me. Um, in any case, now they tracked him down. Uh, first, they found uh, surveillance video of his SUV, uh, leading to the identification of his license plate, which ultimately uh, led to him as you know the registered owner and the driver's license. Once that once that was done, they were able to track his cell phone. I'm not exactly sure how, but uh, I'm sure it can be done. And where he purchased the bomb-making materials at Home Depot. Yeah, that's something you want on your marquee, isn't it? We sell the best bomb-making equipment. I mean, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a fertilizer bomb like uh, McVeigh used in Oklahoma City. I don't know. Um, federal prosecutors filed a criminal complaint, but, it, you know, it's a moot point. He's dead. Um, it just it, it amazes me. But the question that law enforcement, that all these people, everybody's asking, why? Why? Why would you do something like this? I mean, there was no manifesto. Remember the Unabomber? I mean, came out with a long manifesto about, I don't like this, I don't like government, I don't blah, 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 blah. You know, the the ramblings, uh, the continuous stream of consciousness of an obviously deranged man. You know, nothing from this guy. You know, like I said, if he's 23, you look at him, he looks about 16, it's uh, yeah. You have to ask why. Somebody asked me why. Why do you think someone does that? I don't know. You know, it would if maybe if he got kicked out of college, and all the bombs were going to the college. You know, you could kind of put two and two together, I guess. Um, but they seemed random at first. It seemed they were targeting an area, and then they seemed very, very random. You know, aside from the fact you're not supposed to kill yourself biblically. And maybe that's the biggest part for me. I don't know. But, I mean, I, I've been depressed. I've been angry. I've been, uh, I've been extremely angry. You know, that, that blind rage, I, I've experienced that. But I never thought about killing anyone or killing myself. You know, I, I just, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's because, you know, I, I was raised with controlled aggression. Does that make sense? Total sense. Controlled Controlled. Uh, I took Taekwondo for about 17 years. My stepbrother and uh, what's his name played the. Oh gosh, Norris? yeah, Norris from Chuck Norris. yeah, he's from Ryan, Oklahoma, and, and Jack Wong. They all started the Black Belt Karate Association. So I took for about 17 years. I fought tournament karate for I don't know eight years, and but it was all controlled aggression. You know, you weren't out there to maim for life somebody, or to kill anybody. But it was controlled in the, as much as you, you can be when you're hitting somebody um, and you're getting hit. But, you know, maybe there's something to be said for that. You know, the, we try so hard to, you know, turn little boys into little girls and little girls into little boys and we're all the same. There's no gender difference. Yes, there's a big gender difference. We're wired differently. Maybe if, if, if kids are exposed, you know, under a controlled circumstance uh, to aggression, just like guns, then they know how to handle themselves or they know what to do with, with all that rage or they know, I, I, I don't have the answer. I, I truly don't. Why would anyone make bombs and send them through the FedEx or mail or whatever, just randomly? Why, why would they do that other than they didn't value human life at all and what, wanted to make an impact somehow, some way? Why would anyone do that? All right, 17 minutes after the hour. Well, to wrap this thing up, uh, they're, uh, they're giving everyone... Uh, this kid lived in Pflugerville. Um, he uh, was a computer repair technician. Uh, what else did he do? He, uh, he worked as a purchasing agent, a buyer, shipping and receiving at a uh, manufacturer solutions company. Uh so evidently he had some, some knowledge, but like I said, you look at the kid, he looks like he could be knocking on your front door. Hey, mow your lawn for five bucks. Um, suspicious package mail activity, safety tips. This is what they're putting out. Do not handle packages, any packages. Do not pick up packages. Do not disturb packages. And for some of you that do a lot of work with Amazon and all that other stuff, uh, you know, this is going to be a little disturbing. Uh, they also say pay attention 
to any suspicious device, whether it's a a package, backpack, or anything that looks out of place. Do not approach it. Call 911 immediately. This is what uh, the Austin Police Department is sending out. Uh, even though the bomber, or excuse me, suspected bomber, is dead. Uh, they don't know whether anyone was working with him. They don't know if he uh, planned some other attacks and there are other uh, packages out there that could explode. So the uh, Austin Police Department is asking the public to remain vigilant and report anything suspicious if you come across anything that looks suspicious. Do not touch, handle, or disturb it. Keep a safe distance and call 911. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, Backpacks. Have you been to a high school? Um, Yeah, besides school shooting, uh, I guess now we have to worry about backpacks and packages. No, we, you know, this society is just, it's, it's, it's vibrant. It's fine. Everything's going well. We don't have any problems whatsoever. What? Backpacks? What are you, nuts? I'm, I'm not worried about that. Uh, bombs and packages? I'm not worried about No, this is a vibrant, alive society where we all respect each other and treat each other as we want to be treated. No, everything is fine. There's nothing to, nothing to see here. Get back in your cars, go home, tip your waitress. Everything's okay. Well... Obviously, I'm speaking with my tongue firmly planted in my cheek. It's not okay. And it's getting worse. Uh, While CNN is talking about porn stars on Twitter, um, you know, the the country's going to hell in a handbasket. And a big reason is because of politics and government. You know, we've become so secularized in this country, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, I'm not talking about, well, back in the good old days. Well, the good old days weren't so good. There were a lot of problems then, too. But there was value for human life. You know, we weren't shooting up the schools and sending bombs in the mail. And, you know, there were incidents here and there. But, you know, I was asked not too long ago, Rick, isn't this just a a product of the media and things aren't really that bad? Well, if you go home and... Lock your door, draw your blinds, turn on the lights, and it's just you and the family, it's probably fine. But nobody lives like that, unless you're a hermit or you're on drugs. Most of us, you know, have to be out and about in the public. And you never know. You never, never, ever know what what's going on, what the possibilities could be. I mean, this this dirt clod sending uh, bombs in the mail, I, I mean, what's, Why? Was there a statement? Was there a reason? You know, we always want to wrap everything up like we watch television. No, it's all wrapped up in an hour. You got a few breaks, go get a sandwich, maybe relieve yourself, but you come back, you got a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it's all wrapped up, and then you move on to the next form of entertainment. I'm sorry. Things are not okay. Things are really not okay. And it's going to take every single one of you Every single one of you to turn this around. You know, we have allowed government and politicians at every level, city, county, state, and federal, to run the show. And it's nothing but a mess. You know, we've got another committee. I found, what was it, this afternoon, I think? Uh, There's a committee, a Confederate Memorial Committee. And they've got to get together and they've got to decide, you know, whether... You know, if you look at a memorial, you're going to think about slavery. You know, some some idiot on the city council was speaking. Uh, Dallas was the bastion for slavery. Dallas and all their wealth uh, was gained by slave. I, I'm thinking, man, you know, don't want to party with this guy. You know, only talking about a couple hundred years ago. Yeah, you know, all the wealth that Dallas has received is because of slavery. This was the bastion of slavery. Oh, shut up, okay? Let's let's move on down the road. Is that possible? You now we have created through through government reliance a whole a whole societal system of professional victims. There are people, and I know you know I've got a good friend. I won't give his name. But I've known him forever. If he doesn't have some kind of crisis or drama in his life, he's just not happy. He's not. Well, we've got a whole society that same way. So, well, there you go. The Austin bomber, 
uh, has assumed room temperature, but the Austin police are saying, still beware. We don't know. We don't know if this guy, you know, sent more bombs. We don't know if he's working with someone. We don't know. And that's part of the investigation. So there you go. And most people, oh, yeah, bombing. Yeah, well, it wasn't at my house, so I don't care. That's that's the mentality most people have. Bombings in Austin, oh, that's terrible. Yeah, a couple of people died. Yeah, well, that's terrible. Well, didn't happen at my house. I, I checked the mail today. Uh, there's a sale going on at Kohl's, as a matter of fact. I, I mean, people just don't care. They don't, they don't care about anything. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And uh, I talked to my wife last night about this just a little bit. And she was like, before he was killed himself in the parking lot, she's like, is he going to move north? Is he going to move north? Right. Is he going to move north? Is he Because he's already accomplished so much in Austin. Oh, you mean you know, geographically. Yeah, is he going to yeah. start moving his... Uh, uh, he's not moving anything anywhere right Well, not now. now. Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah, he's... Uh, but he took the, the easy way out. The question is, uh, like I said, you look at his picture... And have you seen his picture? He looks like a kid moaning. Yeah, he looks on, like my he? son. Yeah, almost. Even though he's wearing a wig in that one photo where he's going in the FedEx. I mean, that looks like my son. Yeah. I mean, did you really think that was going to cover your tracks? I mean, even even with cell phones. I mean, you can find anybody if they've got a cell phone. So. I just don't understand why he went into the FedEx building and to mail that package. Know, where he he could have done it. He wanted to blow ways. somebody up real bad. I think. I mean, so. I'm not going to give anybody an idea how to do it, but there's other ways to do it. Well, no, let's not give a workshop on how to blow people up. That's probably not prudent. Not a not a problem. Okay, yeah, it's, keep that to yourself. Save it for the book. All right, we're going to step aside very quickly. And uh, what's going on? Dennis Martin is in today, standing by in the WBAP newsroom. Very latest breaking news. We'll check your afternoon drive. Also, uh, the pastor of. Uh, the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Dr. Robert Jeffress, is going to be here in just a second to tell us what they're doing Saturday while thousands of people go to the March for Our Lives event in Washington, D.C., which seems like an extremely, extremely uh, bad idea, an effort in futility, like D.C.'s ever been able to accomplish anything. Something else is going to be going on here in Dallas with thousands of people in the street. I'll tell you about that next. All right, welcome back to Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show. Glad you're along, 2.32 the time. Now, this Saturday, uh, there will be tons of people in D.C., Washington, D.C., the March for Our Lives event uh, to call for gun control in an effort to end. Basically, what, what has happened here, the government at every level, city, county, state, and federal, has done a very good job of raising a couple generations to think that somehow government is uh, your savior. Somehow the government is going to be able to keep you safe. Somehow the government uh, is the answer to all the problems. Well, you and I that have some life experience know that's simply not the case. Younger people don't. So they're being used politically. Um, but something else is going on. Um, this Palm Sunday night, March 25th, Thousands will be in Dallas uh, and be publicly declaring something. I'm going to let uh, the pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Dr. Robert Jeffress, uh, which you know, I mean, he, his reputation precedes him. Pastor, how you doing? Great, Rick. Appreciate your having me on. You bet. You, uh, you are here to tell us that... Uh, you know, there's something else going on besides an effort in futility in D.C. There's something going on here, right? Right. This Sunday night, we're inviting Christians from all over the Metroplex to join us at First Baptist Dallas in front of the fountain, and we are going to have what we're calling a March for Eternal Life. Thousands of us will be marching through the streets of downtown Dallas, 
carrying an illuminated cross on this Palm Sunday night all the way to Clyde Warren Park where we'll have a brief service down there. And what we're doing, Rick, is proclaiming that we believe that the ultimate hope for America is faith in Jesus Christ. And you referenced the March for Our Lives, marches taking place all over the country on Saturday for gun control. We're not against that. Perhaps there's a need to look at gun control laws and background checks. But what we're saying is if that's all we do as America, it's like putting a Band-Aid on a cancerous tumor. It doesn't deal with the root problem. We can only change Americans' behavior when we change their hearts, and that's what the gospel is all about. So this is in no way a protest against what's happening Saturday, but it's saying it's not the full or even the most important piece of the puzzle. Faith in Jesus Christ is what will change our country's uh, hearts, and that's what will change our behavior as well. Well, also, uh, Pastor Jeffress, it was Pence, uh, Vice President Pence, uh, there have been a few that uh, people have outwardly and publicly with evidently, you know, no concern about what the backlash would be, um, mocked their faith and their relationship yes. with Christ. And I'm thinking, you know, I re- I know the scripture, turn the other cheek, and I understand that. But at some point, you have to draw a line and say, no, I will not ignore or uh, not proclaim my faith. I mean, that's. I think too many people say, well, I'm not supposed to say anything. Um, you know, you have to look at this pragmatically and say, wait a minute, you can't come out and call somebody crazy uh, for, for, right. for talking to Christ, right? Yeah, that's right, Rick. And that, that's part of an even bigger narrative of what's been happening in this country for the last 70 years. For the last 70 years, secularists have been on a crusade to try to eliminate the acknowledgement of God from the public square. Secularists have said, we believe as a country we can be good without God. Well, I'll say that has been a dismal failure in our country. And But during this attempt, there's been an attempt to shame Christians, like you mentioned, uh, uh, threatening them, shaming them for mentioning their faith in the public square. And what I read in Scripture is the church is never to be on the defensive. We're to be on the offensive. We ought to be proudly proclaiming, not because we're mad, but because we're happy in the Lord. We ought to be saying we believe that this is a a, a relationship with Jesus Christ that's not only changed our life, it can change America as well. And so that's what this is going to be Sunday night. Uh, this isn't a funeral dirge. We've got a Dixieland band that will lead the procession down to Clyde Warren. Park, and this is for anybody and everybody who's not ashamed to say that they're a Christian to join in with us. You know, I, I get, uh, I get uh, well, just like you, I'm sure, hundreds of emails a day, and somebody took exception with something I said yesterday, um, and I don't even recall the, the conversation, but I said, you know, I'm, I'm a little over six foot, about 235, you know, I've, uh, you know, I've fought tournament karate for a number of years when I was younger, and I, I ride motorcycles and horses and, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think I'm pretty, pretty strong, but I'm never as strong as when I hit my knees and, uh, you know, give credence where credence is due to, um, my creator. I'm never as strong as when I'm on my knees, uh, to God. And somebody said, well, Rick, I can be strong without God. Yeah, you can but you will experience a strength you've never known once you have faith in God and you hit your knees to pray to him. And I I just couldn't get that, that message across. Well, you're absolutely right. And that's true for us personally. It's true for us as a nation. And, you know, we've got to quit allowing the secularist revise the history of America. For the first 160 years of our nation's history, Our court system unashamedly said America is a Christian nation. This nation was founded on Christian principles. That doesn't mean we don't welcome people of all faiths or no faiths, but without hesitation, our founders said, our Supreme Court said, in ruling after ruling, America is a Christian nation. And Sunday night's an opportunity for us to say, Again, that we believe that the only hope for this country is turning back to God instead of continually turning away from him. And that's the long term. You know, someone asked me about school shootings and I said, well, it's a two phase uh, situation as I see it. Uh, First phase, 
put uniformed police officers in school, limited, uh, limit the ingress and egress. Um, but that's, you know, that's a short term fix. And then you need to return to biblical principles. And well, what if uh, I'm Jewish or what if I'm Hindu or what if I'm Muslim or what if I'm this? If you look at biblical principles, uh, they work for all theologies. Yes. Yes. And that's why I appreciate what you've done on Facebook and your call for our country to come back to God. And, and look, you know, the acknowledgement of God and that we're accountable to him is the beginning place to turn this country around. The Russian writer Dostoevsky said, without God, everything is permissible. And that's why I think we're seeing just the downward spiral in our country, increased violence, immorality. When you take God out of the equation, why not do what you want to? Uh, why not act any way you choose to act? I think the teaching of the real God, to whom we're all accountable, is the beginning place. And again, this isn't strange, Rick. I mean, for the first 160 years, I mean, our school children used the New England primer that had children memorizing the Ten Commandments had them uh, 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 memorizing verses of Scripture. And what I always ask these pinheads from the ACLU that I debate on Fox <laughs> is, why is it that the Supreme Court said 118 years ago, of course this is permissible, but now they've declared that even posting the Ten Commandments is unconstitutional. Did the Constitution change? Of course not. What has happened is we've allowed the liberals and the secularists to pervert our Constitution into something our founders never intended. Or, uh, in some cases, they simply skim over it in education classes, don't really teach the Constitution. And that's like I say, you know, when you talk to younger people about the Constitution, you get the deer-in-the-headlight looks. Uh, well, you can't miss something you never knew you had. Um, that's why the Constitution is important, Declaration of Independence. I mean... Um, I do a, a thing on, on the radio about the Bill of Rights, first 10 amendments to the Constitution, which are written specifically for us, and people had no clue what it even was. So, but listen, we could, you and I could talk for hours, I know. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Robert, uh, Robert Jeffress, senior pastor of First Baptist Church in Dallas, tell folks once again what's going to happen this Palm Sunday night, March right. 25th. Palm Sunday, this Sunday night at 7.30, the March for Eternal Life. It starts at the fountain in front of First Baptist Dallas and goes to Clyde Warren Park. If Christians would like to come earlier at 6 o'clock, we've got a great gospel concert with Sandy Patty, famed gospel artist, our choir and orchestra, and a communion service. But the March begins at 7.30. All right, Pastor, it's always a pleasure. You know that. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me, Ray. All right. So uh, we'll uh, get that up on the website. So if you're driving, uh, it's Palm Sunday night. You can't miss that. Um, and uh, if you want to take part, just just show up. That's all you have to do. 2.43 the time. We're going to step aside, check your afternoon drive, and back with your calls in the Court of Public Opinion on News Talk 820 WBAP. <laughs> 247 the time you're in the court of public opinion your voice your opinion your attitude on the issues of the day we're with you uh, every day monday through friday from two to five your afternoon drive broadcasting out of dallas fort worth and heard all over the country it's toll free 1-800-288-wbap 1-800-288-9227 i you know i love this and I'm being facetious, um, when national publications come out with a headline like this, Dallas considers sending Robert E. Lee statue to museum. Did anybody call you? No, didn't call me either. Don't say Dallas. Say our namby-pamby weak-kneed mayor in the city council considers sending Robert E. Lee statue to museum. Believe it or not, the debate over Confederate monuments is back on the table today in Dallas. In particular, the city council, the brain trust of Dallas, uh, today they heard recommendations about the fate of the Robert E. Lee monument that was removed from the city park earlier this year. Uh, a lot of controversy over the monuments in the park as well as streets named after Confederate symbols, uh, prompted, and this is the way a national publication looks at it, prompted Dallas to take action. No, be specific. 
didn't prompt you or me to take action. It prompted our mayor to take action, our uh, brain trust, known as the city council, to take action. So the Robert E. Lee statue was hauled away on a flatbed and uh, put in storage. Well, since then, here you go. A city task force. A what? A city task force. Okay, so we built a bureaucracy on top of a bureaucracy. The city task force for Confederate monuments has been looking at all kinds of options for the monument. So today, it recommended that the statue be moved to the Texas Civil War Museum in White Settlement. That's out west of Dallas, if you're not familiar. Uh, Also, as a matter of fact, if we could just find a real dense forest and hide it in there, that'd be good. You know, then nobody would see it. Also, the task force, I love this, uh, thinks, I don't know how naming the city council the task force makes them any more intelligent, but evidently it does. Uh, They think the city should add historical context to other monuments. Remove the Confederate cemetery monuments. Are you serious? They want to remove the Confederate cemetery monuments. Um, rename Confederate streets within 90 days, and apologize for the policies that furthered segregation and racism in the city. you got to be out of your ever-loving mind. Well, that's because you're a racist, Rick. No, it's because I realize I live in the year 2018, and I have seen what we have done to try and right historical wrongs. And by the way, you're never, ever going to be able to do that to everyone's satisfaction. i I, I got to repeat this. The task force, I, I would assume the task force are collectively made up of the city council people. They think the city should add historical context to other monuments, remove the Confederate cemetery monuments, and rename Confederate-named streets within 90 days, then apologize for the policies that further segre- uh, furthered segregation and racism in the city. Who are you going to apologize to? You don't know any slaves. You don't know anybody that knew any slaves. You know, you start apologizing for something that happened a couple hundred years ago to the heir or to make yourself feel better, and man, you, uh, I'm sorry, you got you, you got the rest of your year scheduled. Most of the recommendations come at a cost with taxpayers footing the bill. It cost an estimated $75,000 to move the Robert E. Lee statue and place it on a new foundation, plus another $125,000 of your taxes to remove the existing basin steps. There's also, I guess, a time capsule in the base of that thing. That'd be kind of nice to open up. Many of the city council members support removing um, the remaining Confederate monuments. Councilman Philip Kingston called them objects of shame. Objects of, I would say to, with all due respect, no, I'm not going to say that. I don't respect the guy. I would call Councilman Philip Kingston an object of stupidity. However, Councilman Rick Callahan said, hey, just leave them alone. Don't spend any more money. The council didn't make any decision on the recommendations at today's meeting. Uh, Well, this is my, I can't believe it, I'm surprised look. There we go. They couldn't come to any recommendation. Are you kidding me? You want to remove monuments, cemetery monuments? That's that's not, and then you want and then you want to rename all the Confederate named streets within ninety days, and then on top of that, apologize for policies that furthered segregation and racism in that bastion of racism, Dallas, Texas. I don't know. It sounds to me like a lot of people aren't living in the right city. Uh, who are you apologizing to? What are you talking about? You don't have enough on your plate moving the city forward. You got to go back and camp out a couple hundred years ago. What's wrong with you people? Who elected these idiots? 
I'm sorry. Too much? No. Uh, Keep going. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Now, we need to apologize for policies that furthered segregation and racism in the city. When did that happen? When, when was that? Was it yesterday, day before, last month, last year? No, it's been quite some time. And we've struggled through all that trying to get along. That's why I'm saying, you know, blacks and whites can get along if politicians stay out of the mix. And in this case, it's a city council. I can't really even call them politicians. Politician wannabes. That's what they Yeah, that's, uh, these are objects of shame. That's what these are. Man, you guys just can't leave well enough alone, can you? You can't move the city. And the people that live within the city, black, white, short, tall, fat, then you can't move them forward. Instead, evidently, you've got so much spare time, you can go back a couple hundred years. Oh, my God, uh, Dallas, all their wealth came from slaves. Oh, it's these objects of shame gotta, have got to be removed. Those Confederate cemetery monuments, got to get rid of those. All right, your calls. And by the way, if any of the city council geniuses are listening uh, listen up your constituents have something to say if you have the cojones to stick around i'm rick roberts news talk 820 did i say cojones? i did yeah you can do that no yeah that's that's fair game espanol. news <laughs> no i'm last espanol. uh news talk 820 wbap coming up dennis martin in the wbap newsroom we'll check your afternoon drive and all you racist by the way david open up the racist line because according to the city council, we're a bastion of racism. Well, let's go out to the cemetery and remove all the monuments, shall we? Go, yeah, follow me. Let's go right now. This is the news and talk of Texas. Now it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right. We've got a Dallas Confederate Monument Task Force. We've got a mayor that can't even decide what to have for lunch without checking with someone. Uh, how do I feel about this? Well, Let me tell you something, folks. What? You can't fix stupid. And that's pretty much where we are. That's pretty much. And, of course, the rest of the nation are reading these things. Here's the headline in a national publication. Dallas considers sending Robert E. Lee statue to a museum. No, it's not Dallas. It's our weak need council that is still living 150, 75 years ago. Um, they want to, um, they, they had us the task force, the task force. Sounds like a new CBS. Makes him sound tough, doesn't it? Doesn't it? it? It's, what are you? I'm part of the task force. Don't don't make me mad. I'm part of the task force. All right. You left out statue task yeah, force. Yeah. <laughs> I'm part of the statue task force. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, they want to, uh, to do several things. They had a little meeting today, uh, but they couldn't come to any decision. And like I said, that's my... Surprised look. Um, the task force has been looking at options to the... Have they asked you, is the public involved in this at all? I haven't been asked at all. Have yeah. you? No. Uh -uh. Randy? What are yeah. they going to do about the streets? How are they going to do that? Are they going to put that up for a vote? I don't know. They'll probably leave it to the task, task force. force. Yeah. Maybe uh, they need a pothole task force. The task... Yeah, they need a pothole task force. I mean, I hit the same one for the last three years. The task force, thing, uh, force thinks the city should add historical content to the monuments. I don't know what that means. I wouldn't depend on the task, task force. force. I wouldn't depend on them to come up with a good idea. Um, but they want to remove the Confederate cemetery monuments... That's kind of blasphemous, isn't it? Extremely blasphemous. Yeah. I, you, you don't mess with the with, you know, final resting place. No. They want to rename Confederate streets within 90 days and then apologize for the policies 
that furthered segregation and racism in the city of Dallas. Okay, who is the, I mean, task Task force force. going to name is the person that makes the apology? Who are you apologizing to? Uh, What is it? What is this? Uh, You know, this, this, this is not, this is the stuff of children. Uh, Let's go to uh, Pete in Houston, Texas. Pete, how you doing? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. You bet. Um, I, I, I was just thinking right now that like you brought up the topic. I, I believe, and I might be wrong, correct me if I am, some time ago, a law passed that all, all soldiers involved in the Civil War, serving either side, win or lose, they were considered American soldiers for having the same honors. Am I wrong in my history here? No. When was that? Was that back in the 50s or 60s? Or uh, the, It wasn't a law. It was, uh, gosh, what was it? I can't think now. Um, I'll find it, but you're right. You're right. Uh, it, it basically deemed, uh, and it was done because of the daughters of the Revol- uh, Confederacy and all of that. All the right, people, the right? Uh, the people, no matter what side you were on, uh, they were considered um, American soldiers. So, well, that's, uh, wouldn't they be protected un- under the law? I mean, no, like you stated, it, it's it's offensive. Uh, I myself, I'm a veteran. I'm first generation here. I could imagine back in those days, people have their great great grandfather that they were they serve, and it, it, it's just offensive, you know. And I, I'm not white, and I have nothing to do with that in my history. I'm the first one here in this country that served. But just seeing it from a perspective point of view, what, what's going on in this city? Where it, are hey, we in California? Hey, hey. What's going it's, on? It's not the city. It's it's the so-called leadership of the city. I mean. Uh, what you're talking about, you know, I'm starting to remember some of that stuff. Um, uh, it, what was it? It, was, it wasn't, it was Congress didn't make Confederate vets into U.S. vets. Um, Confederate memorials were defaced from Texas to North Carolina. Um, you know, they signed into law uh, a bill forbidding local governments from removing memorials without the permission of state lawmakers. Um, and they were doing that because people were losing their minds. Uh, one claim that's circulated among uh, Confederates forever uh, is uh, that Congress passed a law in 58 giving Confederate veterans status under law equal to U.S. veterans. It was also made into a, a pretty easy-to-share memo for uh, for Facebook. Um, it, you know, it's it's more convoluted than that. The Sons of the Confederate Veterans cited the 58 law to make the case that all Americans should honor Confederates. Um, it's, it's Since it resurfaced, you know, it, now you've got people interpreting it three or four or five different ways. Uh, that that None of that matters to me. I mean, it, it really doesn't. I mean, think about how many people died in in the civil war i mean just unbelievable numbers of people died uh whether you agree with the confederates or the you disagree with them you know it it was a long time ago we've learned our lessons i hope you know we're, we're smarter now than we were then i hope um you know the city council needs to go about the business of running the city moving forward you know, I don't expect anything to come out of the mayor's office, but the city council, well, they did something. They did a what? Task force. Yeah, I feel so much better. Uh, your call straight ahead. All right, 3.15 the time. This is the Court of Public Opinion. In Dallas, Texas, we apologize for the mayor and, of course, we apologize for the task force. Um, We apologize for the city council. Um, You know, it doesn't matter to me what side you come down on um, in the Civil War. You have to look at it in historical text. There's roughly a little over 1.2 million American soldiers have died in the nation's war. World War I, World War II, Korean conflict, Vietnam. 
almost half of that, almost half that number were soldiers in the Civil War. Between six, 620 and 650,000 men died in the Civil War. About 640,000 in all other conflicts. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. You know, things were different then. We've moved on. We've, but you got to look back and you, you know what, the, do you know what the main cause of death was for a Civil War soldier? It'd be wounds, wouldn't it? Because there wasn't any uh, medical. Dysentery. Dysentery, yeah. Uh, that was the most fatal disease, according to the Civil War preservation, you know, people that do that. Um, they also died from typhoid, um, fever, bacterial disease, disease transmitted by lice, I think. Uh, malaria, pneumonia, smallpox, yellow fever. It was just horrible uh, on both sides. But think about that. Almost 650,000 men. That makes up half of every soldier that's been killed in every conflict. World War One, World War Two, Korean conflict, Vietnam. Is that not, I mean, that boggles my mind. I can't, that's amazing to me. There was one battle, one battle, and I don't remember the battle. It lasted one day and left almost 13,000 soldiers killed. I mean, that, to me, forget what they were fighting for for a second, the numbers just are hard to wrap your head around. They kind of stood it, just fired at each other old fashioned with the. Yeah, it, it, it was, it was, I mean. Did it, it was by horrible. ranks? It was horrible. Well, you know, evidently, um, Dallas Task Force and Mayor uh, don't want your input. I don't remember any input from anybody here. Do you? Well, and they're our leaders. Yeah. Well, that's right. There. That's right. And and don't forget. Yeah. Don't forget. Not only do we have a leader, we've got the city council task, task force. force. That's right. And that should say everything right there. Uh, Johnson and Granbury. Johnson, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Oh, Rick, I'm doing really good. Hey, you know, before you took that last call, uh, you sort of alluded to my question. And I'm I'm not being absurd, but I'm I, I, I want to know who will deliver this apology. I mean, they, you just can't pick any any person to deliver it. Um, and then after that, uh, who's going to accept the apology? I mean, if they if they're truly serious about this, it seems like to me you would want somebody who's. Um, I mean, obviously, you probably need a white racist to get up there and do the apology and then someone to basically take the apology apology accepted and then uh, hopefully move on with the rest of us in the 21st century you know i it's it's i'll, I'll be honest with you man this is the the height of stupidity as far as i'm concerned it's like no, you're you're right. It is, and I'm I'm like I say, I'm not trying to be absurd, but you know, Rick, I'm a white male. I'm in I'm an older white male. Uh, brother, this just keeps going on and on and on, and I'm I'm beginning to think that a lot of those people just don't want it to end. No, they, there's as I said before, there's always got to be strife, conflict. Uh, points of contention for some people, especially um, people in politics, uh, because then they've got something to to conquer, to solve, to resolve uh, that they can get elected next time for. I, I mean, it's 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 nuts. It's crazy. Leave the Confederate monuments where they are. You want to put a little bronze, you know, history context up? I, I don't care, you know. But don't be doing all this stuff. Um, and at taxpayer expense and saying, well, this is what Dallas is doing. I'm part of Dallas. You're part of Dallas. Uh, we're not for this, are we? Well, you know, like I say, Rick, I'm, I'm just ready for this to end because I mean, how it's, it just keeps going on and on. And I, I know there's got to be a lot of people out there like me that are getting sick and tired of it. I mean, good gosh, people come on. It's 
let's move on. It's the 21st century. Get with it. Yeah, well, there are some people that refuse to do that. There are some people, um, and and most of them uh, black, some white, uh, that will refuse to let uh, that era of our history um, fade into history. You know, we've moved on. We have laws. Uh, there's no institutional racism as long as there are human beings. Um, if you choose to be a racist, uh, go ahead. You can't do anything about it. You know, walk around with a burr haircut and jack boots, I guess. But, um, you know, there are some people that just are never going to let this go because it is their identity, if you, if you follow that. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, Dallas is setting a, a horrible example. They're setting a horrible example. And, of course, I'm going to be called a racist for the next two weeks because of this show. But I, I'm sorry. The taxpayers weren't uh, that are footing the bill for all this. Nobody talked to you, did they? No. They didn't talk to me either. You know, this is all coming about uh, because of the uh, infinite wisdom of the city council task, task force. force. Yeah. And, and for my money, I'm not getting much bang for my buck. Uh, let's go to Steve and Ennis. Steve, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Steve? I'm doing great, Rick. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks. Uh, thanks to you and David again for taking my call. Sure. I have a question. Uh, where is the historical society? Um, how come they haven't come forward uh, since this began? Uh, they're being awful quiet, aren't they? Yeah, I haven't heard anything from them. You know, I maybe I'm. Why. I immerse myself in the news every day, five days a week. Yeah. I have yet to hear anything. Isn't that kind of strange? Yep. I mean, what are they all a bunch of liberals, or um, do they uh, just not care about the history that they're trying to protect? I would like the answer. Uh, well, uh, you know, oddly enough, David has put a call into David. Um, I know he's on the phone, mm -hmm. uh, but David did put a call into one of the Civil War museums, I guess, to try and get uh, you know get that answered david who'd you call by the way i called the texas civil war museum and i spoke with the person and right now cindy Harriman, she mm -hmm. is the executive director she is doing an interview with cbs 11 right now right so they will call me back once she's done okay good so hopefully uh, we get them today so he is in contact with them yeah uh, they're you know they're they're speaking because i guess this thing reared its ugly head once again uh, <laughs> but maybe steve we can get them before the end of the show Okay, I would appreciate it, and thank you again for taking the call. Steve, I'll listen now. Anytime, I appreciate the call. Yeah, I, I. What's their take? You know what? What do they say? Um, I feel much more comfortable with people knowing what they're talking about. You know that one. Um, what is his name? I always forget it. The. Um, oh gosh, the uh, city councilman. I don't know whether Kingston. That's it. Um, councilman Kingston called the monuments objects of shame. Okay, well, you're entitled to your opinion if you want to keep that alive for the next two or three hundred years. Maybe in 500 years, we can look back and say, historically, this happened. It was bad. Um, a lot of people, 650,000 people died in the war, which is half of every uh, war that we've ever had. What's that? Go ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, Doug, well, I tell you what, I'm, I got a break very quickly. Doug, stand by. I'll take your call in just a second. 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. And uh, he's still there, Dennis Martin, standing by in the WBAP newsroom. The very latest breaking news, and we'll check your afternoon drive. All right, at 3.32 the time. You just thought it was over. The debate over Confederate monuments is back on the table in Dallas. And in particular, city council members met today about uh, recommendations. What, what do we do with Robert E. Lee? Maybe we just dig a big hole and bury him, you know? No, I don't know if that was a recommendation or not. Uh, they want to take him maybe to a museum. He's in storage right now. All on your buck. All on your buck. Do you know anybody that thinks slavery is okay? Anybody. I don't either. 
I don't know anybody that thinks slavery is okay. When I look at Robert E. Lee, I, I think of a very, very contentious time in this country. 650,000 men dead over, what was it, four years? Five? Four and a half, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, And now you've got uh, the brain trust for Dallas made up by the city council uh, saying we should add historical context to monuments, remove the Confederate cemetery monuments, rename Confederate streets within 90 days, and then apologize for the policies that furthered segregation and racism in the city. Uh, who who came up with that? Uh, I mean, we got Louis Farrakhan on our uh, city council here. Is that what we have? Uh, let's go to uh, Nathan in Dallas. Nathan, thanks for waiting. Hi. Hi, Rick. How are you? Good. Uh, I just want to say I I think we should put every monument in historical context. If it's the Martin Luther King Jr. monument, let's make sure that everybody knows the KGB infiltrated his organization. If it's Kennedy, let's make sure that everybody knows he was a womanizer and uh, uh, an addict, pretty much. Uh, and let's make sure uh, we take the funding from our social welfare programs to make sure this stuff happens. Because I don't want to spend any more tax dollars. And I'm a Dallas native, born and raised, paid taxes here my entire life. Uh, I'm also a three-time veteran to Iraq, Marine veteran to Iraq. And I'm, I'm just kind of tired of this. Uh, well, when I see national publications with a headline screaming, Dallas considers sending Robert E. Lee statue to museum, that offends me. Be specific. Yeah. The, the morons on the city council and, you know, the ever wavering mayor have decided to do this. Did, did anybody call you and ask you your opinion? No. And no one's called anybody that I know and asked their opinion as well. I mean, like I said, I'm Dallas native born and raised 32 years. So, well, you know, I think they need to put this to a public referendum. That's what I think. I, uh, I agree. You know, but do, I mean, they got all kinds of bureaucracies, uh, flowing in and out of the, the, uh, the state capital. Put it up to a public referendum. Find out what the constituency, the people that actually live here, find out and what they taxes. think. Yeah. And the people that pay taxes. Exactly. Uh, Listen, Nathan, I appreciate the call. Doug in Dallas. Doug, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Doug? I'm doing well. How about you, Rick? Good. Hey, these people that we've been making reference to is our leaders. Uh, they're not leaders. I think they're even confused about it. Leaders are people you follow into combat. Leaders will tell you where to go and what to do. I know leaders. These are not leaders. These are public servants, and I stress servant. They work for us. They are on our payroll. And uh, by golly, they need to listen. Can you imagine your employee not listening to you? Well, you know, I, that's been my mantra at a federal level for 20 years or more. Um, you know, I... I I'm just embarrassed. I'm embarrassed these people work uh, work where they work for the city of Dallas. Um, instead of making these decisions, you know, I mean, they didn't buy their way in. Well, maybe they did. Um, they were elected. Uh, I want to know who, how, who thought these people were good um, and competent to be put in that position. This is nuts. Yeah, it is. You know, Philip Kingston, I don't know, I wouldn't know him if he walked through the door. He's a councilman. He called these uh, monuments objects of shame, and we need to do something about it. Well, I, I think we have over the last couple hundred years. Um, when I look at uh, those monuments, I think of, uh, you know, the bloodiest time in this nation's history, and let's not make the same mistakes twice. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe they think uh, we're all idiots, just walking around totally oblivious to, to American history. Um, of course, if you were in a classroom, you might think that. Uh, Doug, I appreciate the call very much. Billy and Burleson, Billy, thanks for waiting. Hi. Yes, sir. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you, and thank you for taking my call. Uh, I agree with Doug. Uh, I think I know him, but that's not. And then Nathan, before that, I really liked his suggestion of uh, cut out the welfare programs and help pay for this. But I told your caller, the screener, to me, if they're wanting to get any and everything that's racist, slavery related, we need to look into the name of Dallas. My understanding is that that town was named after a vice president, Dallas, and he was also a slave owner. 
So I think any and everything that has the word Dallas on it needs to be changed. Well, it'll be, uh, you know, I've heard that before. I don't know if it's true, but um, it'd be interesting to see what the brain trust for the city of uh, Dallas uh, intends to do about everything. Everything. Right. Not just right. monuments, everything. If you're going to do one, let's do it all. Just clean the board and start over again. Yeah. It, uh, it does, isn't this embarrassing? It really is. It really is that uh, on a local level or even a national level, a uh, nation as great as America is, and we're, we're dilly-dallying with something of our own history and trying to turn it into something that, you know, shouldn't be. It's, like you said, it was a lesson learned. We don't want to go there again. And that's I'm like you. When I see that, that's what I think of. And I think of all those that died. And uh, I've been doing genealogy here lately and found out that some of my family was involved in that, not slavery, but in the war itself. And and it's just amazing some of the history you find out about that. And and it, it's sad that it's coming to the surface now and causing more problems that are really not necessary. Now, it, uh, what, uh, by the way, uh, good call, Billy. What Billy was talking about, you know, where the name Dallas came from, it, you know, it's kind of kind of confusing. Dallas was founded, I guess, on the Trinity River. Um, it was founded by John Neely Bryan, I think. Um, but as far as the name Dallas, um, some people believe it was created in the late, what was it, 1840-something, um, by the Texas legislative. Uh, it was named in honor of George Mifflin or something, Dallas. Uh, he was the vice president under James Polk. But, you know, I don't know. Between the two, it does, doesn't, I mean, really, is that all we've got to deal with in the city of Dallas? I mean, it's 2018, for crying out loud. You know, that's the name of the town, Dallas. And we're going to change street names now because... Uh, the the city council, well, you know the city, not just the city council. It's it's a new organization, the Dallas City Council Task, Task Force. Force. Yeah, they've decided that they know better than any of you what to do with all this stuff. Um, amazing to me. Let's go to Robert in Temple. Robert, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Robert? I'm very well, thank you. And yourself? Good, thank you. Good. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak with you. With all this name changing and the uh, task force, as you say, if they get wind that my mom would like to move to Dallas, uh, she would be in a world of hurt because her name is Dixie Lee. Oh, my God. Well, she can't come. That's all there is to it. No. Yeah, I imagine they're going to put up a sign, nobody named Dixie even lived in a certain number <laughs> of miles around there. <laughs> you know what? I, 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 again, these people that refuse to move forward, that want to reach back, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that want to reach back uh, to slavery and all this, uh, like that one councilman, the wealth of Dallas was created by slaves. Well, not in the last couple of hundred years, it wasn't. I, I mean, I, I, I can't wrap my head around what they're trying. And then they want to remove the cemetery monuments from the Confederate cemetery? I mean, that's, that's yeah, you said it. It's asinine. It's, uh, it makes no sense. That's blasphemous. I don't care who's buried there. You know, you don't back in the civil war for the most part, soldiers on both sides were buried where they fell or close to hospitals where they died. But I mean, there were so many 650,000, you know, after the war, they tried to, to, to move them to different places. But there were so many, there's probably thousands, if not 10,000 or more, uh, unnamed burial sites for, for Confederate and Union soldiers. I don't think you ought to be going around the cemetery and, uh, well, let's get these monuments out of here. We don't, we don't need this stuff. Uh, put it up to a public referendum. I dare, I challenge the bureaucracy on top of bureaucracy on top of bureaucracy, which is the brain trust or task force, whatever, whatever you want to call it, I challenge them to put this up to a public referendum. You know, most blacks don't want to deal with this. They just like uh, the Democrats to come through with some of the promises they've made in the last 50 years to clean up uh, the inner city, to improve the schools, knock down the crack houses, fill in the potholes, light up the street lights, 
and bring jobs back to an area where they live. They're not looking for a $15 minimum wage or abortion on demand. Hell, they want work. They want to own business. They want a level playing field. That's what the city of Dallas ought to be involved with, not reaching back a couple hundred years. Well, how do we make this right? Who do we apologize? Who, who are you going to apologize to? That's one of the recommendations. We should apologize. To whom? Okay. I'm getting carried away. All right, 347 the time. I would just like to take get rid of the music if you would. I'd like to take a moment to apologize to everyone listening. If my great 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 grandfather ever did anything to offend anyone in his life, I apologize for it. Is that what we're doing? Is that what is that what uh, they're suggesting? I think so. Oh, wait a minute. That, no, see, that's not going to work. My real dad moved to the United States from Sterling, Scotland when he was 19. So I don't know what my great, great, great grandfather did. If Whatever he did, it was in Scotland. So um, I guess I, I, I don't have to apologize. Oh, wait a minute. What, what am I thinking? I'm a white guy. I got that white privilege going for me. Okay, forget the apology. I ap- oh, for that. I apologize for for being white and gaining white privilege. Okay, how's that? That's pretty good. Is that good? Oh well, wait. I apologize because I believe in God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. That's better. Uh, that because that may offend somebody out there. That's out in the backyard sacrificing goats at midnight. I don't know. Uh, I, I apologize to the Wiccans in the audience. I apologize for white privilege that I've been given without earning. I apologize. Is that good? Have I covered everything now? Yeah, pretty much. I apologize for being a white Christian. Okay. All right. And Even you have though, a job. Uh, well, I, I apologize for working. And you got to play football at the university level. I a, did. A lot I of us po- didn't. I apologize for that. All right, you're forgiven. Thank Don't you. Don't let it happen again. Anything else uh, we, I need to cover? Oh, we'll think of something. All right. See, I did all that, and I didn't even need a, a task, task force. force. Yeah, okay. Let's go to your calls. Let's go to Roy in Dallas. Roy, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Roy? Doing okay, Rick. Thank you very much. You're covering my favorite subject. I apologize. Uh, there's no apology needed. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Well, just in case. Yeah. Yeah, we're all Anglo-Americans, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in regard to uh, the, uh, per se, task force, <laughs> now, <laughs> excuse me, but, you know, here it is. We're seeing another $500,000 possibly spent, plus $25,000 for signage down there, plus the money being appropriate for a, uh, museum that was wiped out back in 1936 for uh, uh, honoring uh, the, the people who were enslaved. And then they want to put signage up for a lynching that happened down in downtown Dallas in the early days. But yet we cannot appropriate the money for uh, the monument to honor and respect the five Dallas police officers who were slain in downtown Dallas, July 7th of 2016. Protecting people and protesting against them. Truly so, absolutely. And uh, the fact is, is that the way the Dallas City Council and the mayor and the city manager and the city secretary went about this, nothing was posted in the legal bulletins or notice section of the Dallas Morning News uh, for public input. The only story that was covered was by a reporter for the Dallas Morning News. But, however, let's throw the Dallas Morning News editorial editor under the bus for what he did today, uh, who is also promoting the removal of the statues down there at Pioneer Plaza and also removing reminders out there at the state, the Hall of State at State Fair, Texas. Now, this gets even better, Rick. I've got a neighbor who is a relative of Robert L. Thornton, 
which R.L. Thornton Freeway is named that. His statue was removed out of Fair Park because this was not publicized because the mere fact that he they thought he had connections and ties to the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> Were you aware of that? No, I, w- I wasn't. Yes, sir. You know, and I talked with her today, and she was really unnerved over this whole matter. Totally so. And then also the city wants to spend $25,000 for a pedestal for the Robert E. Lee Monument to go out there to the Civil War Museum out yeah, there in Fort Worth. It, it, it get, honestly, Roy, uh, you keep uh, talking. Uh, I am beside myself. Uh, I don't have time now because I'm up against a hard break. When we come back, I will tell you, I will tell you, if you want to spend taxpayer money on removing Confederate statues, removing monuments from Confederate cemeteries, going out and making an apology, I'm not sure to who, I'm going to tell you where those dollars should go. And you know what? Every single taxpayer would agree with me. Put this up for a public referendum. Stop just willy-nilly making decisions from a, well, you know what it is, a task Task force. force. And do what the people want. We're 800 police officers short in the city of Dallas. Dallas police officers are are leaving left and right because we can't pay them a living wage. You want to spend taxpayer money? Well, you're going to one way or the other. When we come back, I will tell you exactly what to spend it on. And this task force can, oh, careful, Rick, uh, can, um, (laughs) okay, I'll tell you what the task force can do when we come back. And I'll tell you what the dollars need to be spent on. If the mayor's looking for public input, partner, I got your public input. Stick around. I'll tell you everything you need to know next. This is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, all right. I got to get this out. I got to get this out. You know the city of Dallas that the Brain Trust City Council and the ever vacillating mayor control to some degree. Do you know that we're almost 800 police officers short? Police officers are leaving every single month. Why? I can't make a living. It's Dallas, Texas. It's not Brush, Colorado. It's Dallas. You think instead of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on monuments to Confederate soldiers, we got to get rid of those. We got to get rid of If we don't get rid of those, slavery's coming back. It's been gone for 153 years in Texas, but we, you never know. They're objects of shame, according to one councilman. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. You, we deserve what we get. Police officers, sheriffs, law enforcement in general, they put their lives on the line every single day to protect our sorry butts Um, In some cases, five police officers were gunned down, ambushed, assassinated, protecting people that were protesting them. And you want to talk to me about spending $100,000 to move a Confederate statue because slavery was wrong? Who, Who doesn't know slavery was wrong? You know, save for a handful of uh, jack-booted, burr-headed morons with, you know, between the 10 of them, they got one set of teeth. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. This is an outrage. We're not talking about, you know, Argonia, Kansas. We're talking about Dallas, Texas. 
and the people in power can't even see what the priority should be. First and foremost, you need to erect a more. You want to talk about monuments? If the task force wants to get all up close and personal with monuments, build a monument to memorialize five brave police officers that were protecting people that were protesting them. That's the epitome of law enforcement, what they did. You know, the, the fact that that hasn't been done is a crime in itself. And then if st- instead of moving Robert E. Lee on his horse traveler and some unknown soldier behind him, instead of doing that, how about you get busy with making sure police officers, sheriffs, law enforcement in general can make a living, support their family. They're just like you. You know, they want to own a home. They want their kids to go to a good school. They want to go home and bar- barbecue with the neighbors after they mow the lawn. What, what, what do you think? A police officer walks out, does his shift, goes in a closet someplace and just stays there until it's time to go uh, on shift again? What's wrong with you people? Need to be paying these people. I mean, paying them well to do what they do. How many people employed today? Today, at seven minutes after the four o'clock hour central time, how many people in their profession, at their jobs, would give up their lives for you? Hmm, not the airport, not that. Let's see, Let me, help me out here. Uh, what uh, profession, let's see, first responders, that's it. Law enforcement, firefighters, those people every single day. Law enforcement are prepared to lay down their life, and they have, and they will for you. You don't even know them. They don't know you. It's their job. And we can't even pay them a living wage? And we're 800 police officers short in a city like Dallas because we can't pay a living wage? Does that make sense to anybody out there? Anyone? Well, Rick, you're biased because you have family in law enforcement. Yes, I do. And I, I see the moonlight jobs. You know, I, they have to do it to, to make a living. Does that, any of that make sense to anybody on the city council? Any of it make any sense to that, that mayor that it waffles in the wind like the flag? Any of it make any sense to anybody? Well, Rick, you know, slavery was bad. Shut up. Everybody already knows that. We don't have slavery anymore. It's been gone for 153 years in Texas. And Councilman Kingston, it's an object of shame. You need you either need to find out where you are in 2018 and where we are not, or you need to go do something else. By the way, David, do something for me. What's that? I want you to look up uh, the recall process for city council members in Texas and also recall process for mayor. Would you do that? Don't, uh, On it. Uh, yeah, just uh, print it out for me when you get it. Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, Larry in Dallas. Larry, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Larry? I'm doing good, Rick. Uh, many things I like about your show, but just here in the past, while I've been holding, I've heard some things that I just I need to talk about. I, I don't want to run long. Uh, we need to be welcoming to all people. I heard on the news and the monument makes people feel unwelcome. Well, what about the Southern descendants? who lost ancestors in the war, the war of Yankee aggression, as some people call it. What about, what about them? Do, you, do they move out? Do we move out of Dallas? You know, uh, so take the statue down, and you don't make all people feel well. Welcome. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to talk about was I used to have a job years ago in public school where I'd I'm not going to say what it was, but I would sit and listen to students and parents that were troubled. And uh, there's something called transference. If I have a secret inside of me that is so repugnant, I don't want to kill myself because I'm chicken, but it's so horrible, I have to prove to the world without saying what I've got wrong with me that I'm more noble than anybody else. So I go out and I pick something to transfer my nobility that I want to show off to. And what better thing than an old monument dedicated to something that happened 150 years ago or more? It's an old phrase I hate, but I'll use it, low-hanging fruit. How noble I am. 
See how noble I am? That's yeah. that's it. That's my theory. Well, I'm. Uh, I I've had it. I I mean, you know, Me it, it, it was a national thing because of what South South Carolina, and I figured, well, you know, we just <laughs> we just got a weak need mayor and a bunch of city council people that don't know their backsides from a hole in the ground, and they're just jumping on the train. But now it's come up again. And and I'm thinking to myself, it's Dallas, Texas, for goodness sake. You know, yeah, but there's some priorities. Dallas, yeah, I guess who built Dallas, Texas? It was mostly southern veterans. Well, not according to city council. We uh, ah. Dallas assumed its wealth through slavery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh, that may be true. But you, you can't expunge history. I guess you can, can't you? Of course. Dallas? Of course. Yeah, I just wipe it out. I, I'm not progressive enough to think that way, I guess. Yeah, well, I guess I'm not either. Um, it, it's it's insane. It, it truly is, Larry. I appreciate it. Um, you know, we can't, uh, we can't take care of our uh, law enforcement, but we can spend hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars to uh, to move statues that may offend somebody, I guess, on the city council. Um, or, or wait, for, what about that uh, preacher activist? Well, I can't remember his name. Doesn't matter. Um, you know, he came out yell, yelling and screaming, and it's it's no different than a politician looking for votes. You know, Dallas is a great city, or can be. First thing you do is take care of your law enforcement. Have you do you do you hear that on the news at night? We're almost a thousand short in Dallas. How do you feel? Feel safer? Well, I don't know. We're a thousand police officers short in Dallas, Texas, but man, we got rid of that Robert E. Lee statue. Whew, I feel so much safer. I don't even think I'm going to lock my front door tonight. All right. 18 minutes of after the hour. Now, I'm not saying we should do anything. <laughs> I'm just uh, giving you something. Oh, this just came across my uh, desk. Uh, if you, oh, by the way, you're going to be able to uh, see what goes on here behind the mic. I think starting next week or week after, probably week after, we'll be doing Facebook Live, um, starting in the first hour. So you can see the three monitors in front of me and the, all the stuff. And this just found its way across my console here. Petition for recall of city council members. Huh, what is this? Where did this come from? Any member of the city council may be recalled and removed from office by the electors qualified to vote for a successor of the incumbent as provided in this chapter. Huh. Huh. Is this a novel, a work of fiction? Maybe I need to read this. Uh, the procedure to remove members of the city council are as follows. Well, I'll have to give the, I'll just have to peruse this after the show. And if there's any pertinent information, I'll share it with you tomorrow. How's that? Uh, what a bunch of jokers. Uh, let's go to uh, Susan in Saginaw. Susan, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Susan? Hey, Rick. Um, my name is Susan, and I'm a white woman. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm very, very sorry. I'm a, I'm oh, a, wait, a, wait. Do you believe in God, Susan? Absolutely. Oh, my absolutely. How did she ever find her way on the air? I apologize. <laughs> Listen, couple of things. First of all, like your previous caller, I was listening to the news while I was on hold. And this gal is saying that we have to remove these statues so the world would know that we are an open place for all people. Except if you're in the NRA. Well, and except if you're on a talk show uh, uh, right now and you're a white Christian woman, um, you know, we apologize, folks. I had no idea. Well, we're, we'll accept everyone in the world except for the NRA. But here's my here's my, my point. The Democrats have nothing to run on. They're the ones that are calling the causing the racial instability in this country. They don't have a platform. They don't have a spokesperson. They don't have a leader. You know, Hillary's an embarrassment to them. This is all they have because they lost too many black votes for Trump because he said, what are they doing for you? So if they don't put the black people back down, how are they going to rise them up to vote for them? 
Uh, I don't know. It's a good question. Um, this you know, is a deliberate, deliberate. Well, action. like I said, we we generally get along pretty well as a race. Um, you know, as a race, we 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 get along pretty well um, uh, until politics gets involved, and then they've got to separate us either by race or faith or I don't know, short, tall, fat, thin, whatever it is. They've got to separate us in order to to campaign to a specific demographic so they can win. I mean, how many times today have you heard President Trump defended or congratulating Putin on his win? Um, You want to know what my theory on that is? What? I think President Trump is a very, very clever man. And I think that the more he does to piss off the media, the more they stay focused on stupid and it makes him... I didn't mean to say that. Stupid stuff. I think Randy got made, that. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And it, it, I think he throws that ball out there to keep them off balance. Well, it, no, it's, it's just what one superpower does to another huge power. You know, they keep talking about this. Obama did the same thing in 2012. Exactly the same thing. Same thing. So, so, I mean, it's not like, well, Trump is uh, congratulating Putin and he's uh, meddling. I love that word, meddling, in the elections. Russia didn't airdrop people in to Wichita, Kansas to vote in the dead of night like Red Dawn. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming we do the same thing to them and several other countries. You know, they try yeah. to sway elections by buying ad time and all that stuff. Um, you know, that's not my problem. Just, you know, take care of your business. I'll tell you another thing um, with the press. These children from Parkland, Florida, that have been used as, um, I don't even know what the word is. They're political pawns. That's what they are. Political pawns. They were replaced on liberal news by a porn star. (laughs) Hey, how about that? I hadn't even thought it. Yeah, all these grieving children that are so outraged about no gun control government save us man it just took one porn star and unprotected sex didn't it yep the media has replaced those poor children in parkland for a porn star yeah yeah Uh, susan uh good call you call me anytime you like you know i i am so frustrated with the mayor of dallas and the city council uh and their so-called tax uh task force you can't pay our law enforcement we're almost a thousand officers short and why because we're not paying them anything yeah we'd like you to get up every day put your life on the line and um, you know lay your life down for you know total strangers and let me see i got some money here in the drawer here here's a little something buy yourself a sandwich what kind of crap is that you know again we're a top 10 city i think we're ranked number nine uh, it's uh, it's re- it's over a million what four in population, something like that. Um, rated as a beta plus world city, it's a leader in entrepreneurship, innovation, tech. The city offers a diverse population, a booming economy, thriving job market. The Dallas Fort Worth Arlington metro area is the seventh largest metro area in the entire United States according to World Population Review. Uh, I, I mean, and we, we've got city council folks and a mayor that act like we're a one-stoplight town. Uh, what, what are you doing? You know, get off the Confederacy stuff. Uh, slavery ended 153 years ago in Texas. Uh, move forward. Uh, pay our law enforcement what they're worth. Uh, you couldn't afford that but pay them a living wage. And, and, you know, if you've got a city councilman that's, you know, wringing his hands and tearing his hair out, oh, my God, they're objects of shame. Maybe he needs some psychiatric evaluation. Slavery's over. Hey, city councilman, slavery's over. We don't do that anymore, thank God. It's called history. And you can't airbrush out of history those things which make you uncomfortable. It happened. You can't rewrite it. You can't airbrush it. You can explain it and then move on. Am I wrong about this? Whoa. 
Welcome, 4.30 to the time. I'm Rick Roberts. Man, I'm not going to be getting any Christmas cards from uh, <clears throat> the mayor's office or the city council, am I? Why, why would you say that? Uh, I, I don't know. I apologize. Well, there you go. Uh, if you uh, are just joining us, uh, I thought it was over. Most everybody uh, thought it was over. It's back. Uh, headline screams, Dallas considering sending Robert E. Lee statue to a museum. Um, and now they want to change the street names. They want to do a formal apology. I'm not sure to whom. Um, they, uh, they want to take down the Confederate cemetery monuments. Isn't that desecration? Isn't, I mean, no matter who's buried there. All right. Cindy Harriman, uh, executive director of the Texas Civil War Museum, is with me. I, am I saying your name correctly, uh, Harriman? Is that right? That's correct. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on. Um, because quite honestly, you know, history is history. Right, wrong, indifferent. You can't airbrush out what's uncomfortable. Um, I, I am not sure why the city council is all over this again. But from your perspective, the Texas Civil War Museum, I mean, you can't have a Civil War Museum without the Confederacy, right? That is correct. I mean, if you look at the, well, I'm, I'm, I think I've read 650, between 620, 650,000 men died in uh, that four and a half years, whatever it was. I mean, that boggles the mind. Uh, uh, when you translate that into the same percentage as today's population it would be seven and a half million isn't that incredible and that, and that is incredible and most of them died from disease dysentery malaria all that anyway um do you have a place for robert e lee at your at your uh, museum uh yes it would be uh next to our building on our green space uh we but I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to tell you much information in that the Cultural Arts Department was given the task of finding a suitable home for the Lee statue, and they did their due diligence and I think contacted quite a few area places to see if the sure. statue would fit into that. And, I mean, just other than being obvious, uh, we are a Civil War museum, so... I mean, yeah, why couldn't, they, <laughs> why, why couldn't they just truck that thing out there? You guys have a little nice grassy area, put it there, and, you know, evidently the city council has created a bureaucracy on top of bureaucracy. They now have a task force um, trying to come up with these recommendations. I'm not sure they can even decide what to have for lunch. Uh, I mean... It, it, <laughs> It seems to me that this thing has been blown all kind of ways out of proportion. I know that's not grammatically correct, but, I mean, have you have you told the city council? Yeah, we'll take it. Well, we have not talked with the city council. We have talked with the uh, city cultural arts department. Right. And they took the task force recommendations and then did the feasibility study on all of those huh. recommendations. Jeez. And that is what they presented to the council today. And it is my understanding that the council will come up with a joint resolution and then vote on the recommendations that they received today, which could be three to six weeks, you know, before that happens. Well, what There's about... What about this, uh, forgive me for stepping on you, talking with Cindy uh, Harriman, Executive Director of the Texas Civil War Museum. Um, so you, so somebody there knows that you've made the offer. What, what about this removing the, uh, they look, they're looking at removing the Confederate cemetery monuments? Uh, have you ever heard of that? <laughs> uh, that's, I, well, I know that that was the task force recommendation, but I think the cultural arts department and I really probably need to refer you to them but I think in their findings uh, logistically it's very difficult and it has historical protections yes and there's a cemetery there so it brings about a whole different set of parameters than the Lee monument did. yeah like desecration of a burial site I mean you know <laughs> I get it that you know some of these people are offended because they, I guess they have they been made aware that 
slavery ended 153 years ago in Texas? We would hope so. <laughs> I would hope so, too. They also want to rename Confederate street names within 90 days. Have you heard of that? Well, I know that the task force, that was one of their recommendations, but the Cultural Arts Department, in looking at the history and searching through the records, has recommended that street names that had prominent Dallasites who helped build the city and happened to be Confederates, that those remain, and perhaps the ones that had no relationship to the city of Dallas would be the ones that could be changed. Oh, this... but, it, but again, all of wow. this is at the council's decision. So, <laughs> You know, I, I, have, uh, I have seen some stuff in this business. I've been on radio and television for about 25 years, 16 and a half years in, in Southern California, um, which is if you, if you visited for a long weekend, you're probably okay. Uh, but to live and work there, even though I flew back and forth every, you know, every 12 days or so, uh, this is something I would expect Southern California. I'd expect LA to, or San Francisco to do not Dallas, Texas. And then they said, we need to apologize for the policies that furthered segregation and racism in the city because the wealth of the city came from slavery. Uh, is, is there, I don't understand where this is coming from. Do you have any idea? where this is coming I, from? I do not. Um, other than this is Texas. Texas was a Confederate state. And so geographically, this is our history. And I do not, I do not know any inside information or anything like that. No, we I, I, no. I'm... Said, we just, the only thing our conversation has been is during the removal of the statue and all the polls came out and said the museum is the proper place, a museum is a proper place. And again, stating the obvious, we are a Civil War museum, so we feel like we would be a good, proper place. Well, I, I, look, I'm not going to put you on the spot because I, I would assume um, in your position as the executive director of the Texas Civil War Museum, you have to keep, you know, you have to keep uh, some balance in both directions. But does it make any sense to you that we, after, after all this time, we start taking down Confederate monuments? Anything smacking of the Confederacy has got to be taken out of sight. That's not, that's not uh, looking at your history. That's trying to hide your history. I, I think the purpose and the meanings of why these statues all went up were obvious at the time they went up, and they didn't need further explanation. But as we have been further removed from that generation, now we have a society that doesn't really know the history and why these were erected to begin with. So putting interpretive information uh, that further educates our citizenry, that's, I think that would be an excellent idea rather than removing them. And yeah, see, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you on that. Just because those generations have passed on, is no reason reason to hide them. That's like saying, well, you know, I don't get my uh, great grandfather's, uh, you know, whole uh, whole life experience. Let's put him in a home so nobody can talk to him. Uh, I mean, it just it makes no sense at all. You know, I, I'm not the smartest guy around. I've got a few degrees. I don't know if they help me or not. You know, I look back at our history and say, look, you know, it, you need to learn about the Civil War. I mean, that it, it's just phenomenal. Uh, how many people died, how many people were affected, um, what the, you know, the thought process was on both sides. And, you know, no, I don't look at a Confederate statue and think, ah, slavery, these people really, li I don't think that. I think about that period in history, but you're right. If you don't teach people history, if they don't understand what these things mean, if they don't, uh, you know, you look at the Constitution and, you know, ask a young person about it, and they're just, I don't know. I mean, you can't miss what you didn't know you had. So, you know, that's that's the whole purpose of a museum, isn't it? That is, uh, and we hope that we educate the people that come through here, and we don't try to tell them what emotion they should have, but we know they're going to have one when they leave, and we hope that that furthers their self-learning of the Civil War, just because 
nothing's really changed as far as politics, the press, the people and how they feel. All of that is transcends time. I mean, it affects every generation. It does. You know, I'm, I don't know that you're looking for an extra job, but um, maybe you can be the executive director of the Texas Civil War Museum and the executive director of the city council, too. And, uh, you know, we'll do away with all this. Uh, tell people. I'll, I'll pass on that second job. <laughs> tell people where you're located. I want, I want people to go out and see you. Okay, we are on West Loop 820, uh, three exits north of I-30. And uh, we've, we're entering our 13th year that we've been open. And uh, we have amazing collections of artifacts. I mean, literally, we are an artifact-driven museum. Our collection has provenance to the soldier that carried that item, and we give a human face to these soldiers and we have we balance with equal number of union artifacts to confederate artifacts well that's a that's a i'm glad you said that because if you didn't there'd be a city council member down there counting everything so <laughs> listen i appreciate very much you coming on on short notice i know you're doing a tv interview before that uh but uh you know to wrap this up you have let the city council or or someone in that that area know that you'd take the robert e lee um it uh i i just man i hope they don't start ripping down monuments again it just doesn't make sense uh cindy harriman uh executive director of the texas civil war museum thank you very much i appreciate it thank you all right uh 444 the time will step aside very quickly uh, should do i need to apologize for that um well, we'll get a blanket apology at the end of the show for ah, everybody. Ah, good deal. Yeah. All right, 4.49 the time. Um, remember Fred Savage from the Wonder Years? Remember that? Remember he was, you know, the cute face little boy? Um, stories coming out now that it was uh, the Wonder Years was not picked up for a seventh season because of ongoing harassment allegations against him. Now, on his new show, some woman has claimed that three years ago he violently attacked her. Little Freddie Savage, he could barely ride a bicycle. He needs a timeout. He, he needs a timeout. I apologize for him. Uh, let's go to Rod in Rockwall. Rod, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Rod? Oh, doing uh, remarkably well. Uh, I just want to point out that um, anyone who would draw an exclusive link between slavery and Confederate iconography is just, you know, uh, the word comes to mind, a pinheaded ozone breather, but that's about as printable as I can get. Um, the con the Confederacy existed between about February of 1861. I think the, the dust finally blew off of all that in May of 19 of 1865. So less than four and a half years did the Confederacy exist. So how then could, and most of that time they were blockaded by union, union vessels. So no slave importation to speak of took place during the civil war. So in that four and a half years of their existence, how can they be responsible for a century and a half of slave importation to this continent? Well, I, I've never heard anybody say that uh, the Confederacy was solely responsible for bringing slaves to America. As you said, uh, the Confederacy only existed from 1861 to 1865, and they never were recognized as a sovereign nation. Um, and, you know, I mean, anybody will tell you that it was a crushing, crushing defeat in the Civil War. Uh, to me, see, it's not even about that. What it's about is a period of time in this nation's history, you know, when one part of the country wanted to be its own nation and, and 650,000 people killed. That's, a, that's, that's half of everything we've ever lost in every war. Oh, yeah. Well, here's, here's the link I want to draw, Rick, is that if you are going to use that link to try to expunge, as I said, uh, Confederate iconography, especially, okay, let's just take the Confederate flag. You must, 
if you're going to be reasonable and rational and fair about things, you must treat the flags of England, France, Spain, right. the Dutch flag, and the American flag similarly. Yeah, I, I think you're right, but unfortunately, uh, it sounds like you and I could have a, a lengthy conversation about it, and perhaps both of us would gain from it. You don't have that with the city council. The brain trust of Dallas is not, you know, you've already spoken so far over their heads, they don't know what's going on. And the mayor, good Lord, um, you know, I, I don't expect anything, certainly not leadership from the mayor's office. Um, but what I think we need to do is make our voices known. I challenge, you know, the city of Dallas, put this issue up for public referendum. I mean, if you're truly concerned about serving the city and doing what's right, then put it up for a public referendum. Do you want to see the Confederate uh, monuments and memorials moved out of sight or moved to another location? Uh, the Confederate cemetery, I don't even get that. And as far as apologizing, apologize for what to whom? You know, if, well, we just want to officially recognize we apologize for slavery. And then, I'm sorry, it's, you know, somebody on the city council is living in their own little bubble. They need to get out, get out once in a while. Yeah, go out to a restaurant, you know, get around people, normal people. All right, that's going to do it for me. God's blessings on each and every one of you. Whether you agree with me or not, that's always my priority, and I'm not trying to Cram Christianity down your throat, but if you haven't tried it, you might give it a shot. Um, man, I, I don't... I'm going to read this. The following is an excerpt from the Dallas City Charter relating to elections and referendums and recalls. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm not saying anything. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, stick around. Mark Levin, I'll be back with you tomorrow at 2, your afternoon drive on News Talk, 820 WBAP. You don't show it, dig a little deeper when you think you can't dig no more. That's the only way I know. That's the only way I know. That's the only way I know.